Good evening, everyone. Baruch <coughs> Hashem, we are we are in Parashat Vayakhel Pikudei. Now, I I would like to speak today. <coughs> I would like to speak today about the phenomena of having two parashot combined together. So we this week is the first time that we meet this phenomena. It's parashat Vayakhel connected with parashat Pikudei. We have few other uh, places in which two uh, sedras are combined together. Now, the idea is that when we have when we have such a such a, a case, each parasha is standing by itself. Sometime we know that there are years which are longer, like a year with uh, two adars within it, within it, and there are years which are smaller like our year, a simple year. And then the 53 sandras of the, of, the, of the Torah, sometimes some of them combine together. So we have the Zriya Mitzorah, and we have um, Nitzavim Vayelech, and we have a few others. So what's the idea when we have two parashot together? <clears throat> so the idea that I would like to speak about today is that when we talk about consciousness, there is three levels of consciousness. The levels of the, the first level is I'm standing by itself by myself or a thing stands by himself and then another thing which is stand by itself which is contradicting the first one and then the last level the higher level the highest level is a combination between the two so when we look on the creation we see that within the creation there were three different levels of consciousness. And we will try to see how these three levels of consciousness are actually uh, have a clue in the names of our sedras. So the simple meaning of Vayakhel, that Moshe Rabbeinu gathered all the people of Israel together. They became one group included everyone under one umbrella. Vayakhel Moshe. And Pikudei, the, the simple meaning of Pikudei is that each person and each uh, material within the Mishkan had its own identity. And Vayakhel Pikudei is the unity between the, the whole and the specific details. It's the same idea in Nitzavim Vayelech. Nitzavim is talking about something which is straight, stuck in his place, he's, he's very um, stable. That's the meaning of Nitzavim, to be stable. And Vayelech is talking about a phenomenon of someone who's moving ahead. And then we have Nitzavim Vayelech together. How can it be that the, 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 the state of being stable and the state of being in, in a movement all the time can be combined with each other all the time? Nitzavim Vayelech. And here again in Vayakhel, you have to decide whether it is Vayakhel, some, something which is including everything together, or maybe it is Pikudei, 
Bikudei means that every uh, every piece of reality has its own identity. So I said that this idea of two things which are becoming one, like two sedras which are becoming one, <clears throat> is mentioned also through the creation of the world. So in the beginning of the world, <clears throat> it says that Adam Rishon was created with a feeling that uh, he is completely one with Hashem. Now, this is called divine awareness. Now, within this divine awareness, he didn't have any separate identity. And the proof of that is that he and his wife did not feel any shame. They didn't feel that they have to cover themselves. They didn't feel that they, they have to be shy from each other or, or they have to uh, um, create some kind of separation between them and the world through clothings. They felt one, one, one with the universe. Not only that they felt one, but this was the general awareness through the, through the creation, that every creature felt that he is here, thanks to Hashem, and he is one with Hashem, and he wants to serve Hashem. The only thing that Adam Arishon had to do, that was his mission, is to call every part of creation, to give it a name, and by giving it a name, he actually gave a duty to each part of the creation. And the creation was supposed to work in harmony. And Adam, Chava, and the creatures, the animals, the trees, the sun, the moon, they all had to work together in a harmonic way. Very close to the meaning of our parasha, Vayak Hel that everything was under one umbrella with one awareness, with one will and with one direction. Now, that's a very beautiful state of uh, awareness. Just think about the fact that a uh, person can be totally connected to his mission, totally connected to the creation, totally connected to the nature, totally connected to his wife and totally connected to her husband. Everything is great. Everything is good. There's no separation in the world. There's no bad in the world. Now, somehow within this utopic uh, awareness, sweet, and uh, a wonderful uh, uh, state of mind, came the snake. And he was able to tempt Chava, and later on also Adam through her, he was able to explain her that something is missing, that you do not have everything. There is something which, which uh, which is very essential, and you don't have it within this divine awareness. Now he was, uh, of course, he didn't uh, only uh, said uh, the truth. He, saw, he said a few lies on the way, but generally he was touching a very sensitive point. And the sensitive point was that Everything is so great. Everything is under what Hashem wants. But where is the uniqueness of every creature? How can you make a difference between this animal, that animal, the humankind, the plants? Everyone is here for the same reason. And everyone have an nullification and submission to Hashem. So there is no uniqueness. The only thing which has uniqueness 
is Hashem itself. And he, he doesn't want anyone to be unique. He wants to be the only unique things. He wants the only one who is able to really choose here. If you eat from the tree of knowledge, you'll also have a free choice. You will not be just like another screw within the creation who is doing everything which is said. You will have independence. You will have a feeling of yourself. You'll have a different awareness and you can be special just like Hashem is special. Or in the words of the snake, you will be as smart as Hashem, which is able to choose between good and bad. Something that you are missing now. We can, we can uh, say that maybe it's the story of each, each one of us. We all grow in a family. Please God, the family is good. The mother and the father and the sisters and the brothers are all very, very sweet. And, and they provide me with everything that I need. They give me support, they give me love. And in the end of the day, I feel that they are taking something from me. They are taking my freedom because they want me to be part of them. They want me to be like them. And maybe this is not what I want. Maybe I want to be different. Maybe I want to be the one who is deciding what kind of life I will have, why they have to decide for me. So that, that then comes the, the age when, in which a person is rebelling in his, uh, in his culture, in his family, in community, and he's saying, I'll make it better, I'll make it different. And the reason that he's saying it is because he's, uh, he's sure that he has something very special to say that others doesn't have. It. And he doesn't want to, to be a yes man to the reality to which he was created into. Now, the meaning of it is that the, the snake, the Yetzer Hara, is actually not talking to us in rude words and he's telling us, go against, hate your, hate your creator, hate your parents. He's just telling, telling us something very simple. They are mature, they know what is good, what is bad, and they choose it for you. They had a taste of good and bad, and now they want you to go according to this. Why don't you have a taste of good and bad yourself. If they have such a big experience and they can very clearly say to you that choose this and do not choose that, why to just obey them and not really go and taste what they are talking about? And then you'll have your own experience and you'll be able to, uh, to, uh, to know you'll be able to know the bad, not only to hear about it. If I'm telling a, a person, do not see this movie. It's a very cruel movie. It's not good for your soul. It's, it will destroy you. It will destroy you and it, it will hurt you through all your life if you'll see it. And so he's saying, how do you know? I'm telling you, I saw it. I made a mistake and I saw it and now I know. It is hurting me till today. So he is saying to me, or he's saying to himself, you saw it and you know it's bad. Now you want me to believe in what you say and to, and to, and to uh, avoid myself from seeing it. I want to be in the same experience. What's the problem? The maximum is that I will say to myself, that's not for me but at least I will know the bad. So this is what the snake is telling Chava, is telling her why only to hear about the bad. Let's experience the bad. Let's connect to the bad. Let's be there. <clears throat> and after that, you'll have a free choice. 
Why is lying? <clears throat> because the way that Hashem knows good and bad is from outside. He's looking at the good and the bad, but he's not involved with them. A man is built in a different way. Whatever we are exposed to becomes one of one with our personality. So it's not that in the end of the movie, I'll be able to take out the memory stick from my head and say, I want to erase it. I want to be like before. No, everything that we are doing becomes part of our consciousness, part of our feelings, part of our everlasting memory. And it is, in, it is influencing us through all our life. Now, this was the point that the snake was not honest about. He said, expose yourself to the bad, and then you can choose whether you want it or not. That's not correct. After exposing to the bad, you're not the same person anymore. And you cannot go back anymore. So this, this uh, step out of what we call divine experience is actually a step, a step out of Vayakhel, the feeling that everything is one and everything is within harmony into a different kind of awareness, which is the feeling of the self, Pikudei. As we said, Pikudei is the feeling of this, the uniqueness, the specialness of each uh, particular uh, detail within the picture, giving him his own identity and his own character. Now the step out from the divine to the self-awareness is through the temptation of the Yetzirah. That the Yetzirah is actually telling us, you can make it better than your parents, better than your Rebbe, better than all the previous generations, you can, you can choose something which is more real for you. And that's the first step that the person is doing out of the nest in order to uh, maybe be able to, to, uh, to find a truth which he thinks will be more correct and real for him. We'll stop here and we'll say a story from India. As we know, we, the Baal Shem Tov told us that we, we are able to uh, learn from the stories that uh, we experience in life. So a few years ago, I got a phone call, a not phone call, a WhatsApp message from uh, someone that I do not know, a Schliach in Germany. And he's telling me whether it will be possible to make a Sheva Brachot Seuda in your Chabad house for a, for a couple that I just uh, uh, made marriage for them. So I told them, wonderful, yes, just send them to me. I'm there for them. So they contact us and they said they are coming in this and that day. <clears throat> and of course, we are very happy. We organized in Dharamkot village a, a Sheva Brachot party for them. We invited enough people in, in order to have a, a, a Zimun. We didn't know who, who he's talking about. He came straight from Israel to Dharamkot. <clears throat> it's very weird, two religious people marrying in Israel, coming, marrying in Israel by, by a, a German a shliach, coming straight to Dharamkot, 
the end of the world in in India, and they're having a Sheva Brachot. So we understood that there has to be some story behind it. It's uh, things like that don't happen don't uh, happen every day. Okay, so we we were happy to have them, and then we asked them, "No, what's the story? Why decided to have a Sheva Brachot week in the Amsala, in the Amkot?" So the woman, she was in her late thirties. She said that yes, there is a story behind it. That um, she said that she came to Darmcourt in 2001 when she was maybe 24 years old. And uh, she came from uh, a family which was religious. She learned in a religious uh, uh, school in Israel. But uh, she said, I'm wiser than anyone. I have my own way. She left it in some point. She went to the army. And after the army, she decided to go to travel in India. And on the bus to Darmcourt, which is a 14 hours drive bus, she met uh, a German and they started to become friends. And uh, she came to the Seder Pesach in, in that year in the Chabad house. She did not share with us any, any information about the situation in life. Uh, but she decided that she is uh, she is going to change the world uh, instead of hatred to the German people and separation and such a painful history. She and her boyfriend will change the world and they will show everyone the power of love. And uh, this is what they did. They started to live together. She became pregnant. She had a, a boy which was born. And uh, after a few years together, he, she started to understand that the dream is not so sweet anymore. And the German guy started to call her a dirty Jew. And Hitler was supposed to kill all of you. Such a pity that he didn't finish the work. And he, was, he became very anti-Semitic. And of course, she felt uh, that uh, not only she cannot live with him anymore, she became a little bit dangerous. So. Uh, she left to Israel together with the son. And, uh, and then after a while, uh, she, he, he started to threat her through the email that uh, he, will, he, will do, he will harm her. And uh, again, he was cursing her. So she, she called the police and the police maybe it was in contact with the police in Germany and they, it stopped. So for a few years, there was quiet. And then she thought to herself, the child is growing. Maybe, maybe it's important for his education that he will also know that uh, there's, a, there's a male involved in the, in the story. And uh, she thought maybe to go and visit him in Germany and just for, just for a, few, a few days. And, he, and the guy in Germany was really uh, asking her to do it. So she, did, she wasn't sure what to do. In the end of the day, she went once for a few days. It was okay. And then the next year she went again. And uh, the German is taking the, the child for, 
or something out of the out of the room and he's disappearing with the child and uh, after a few hours she understood that he kidnapped the child the child was uh, i assume maybe 7 years old or something like that of course in that point she was completely broken this is the only thing that she has really in life and uh, she didn't know what to do she didn't have anyone in germany she had no connections so she had an idea that there is something in the world which is called chabad house just like in the chabad house in the Hong Kong. Maybe there's a Chabad house here in my city. It wasn't in München, it was some, some other city in, in Germany. She looked for the Chabad house. She found the Chabad house. She went to the Shliach. She said, listen, this is my story. I'm not religious. I'm not keeping anything, but please try to help me. My son was just kidnapped. So this guy, Baruch Hashem, was uh, very helpful. And he started to think, how to locate the child. He created contact within the group of all the shluchim in Europe. And he sent photos and, uh, and, and, and after a few, I mean, after a day or two, they got a message from the, from the German that they are in, uh, they are in France. So he called the, the Shliach from France and the Shliach from France was, was very close with the, with the police. And uh, he was able to locate the man and the child. And, uh, and in a minute they understood that they are, being, they are going to be caught. They went back to Germany, but this he said to the court, why the child has to be with the, with the, with the mother? You can be with me. So it wasn't it wasn't sure what will be the situation because Israel is considered a, a dangerous place, and Germany is considered a safe place. So uh, there was there were big chances that the judge will decide that the child has to stay in Germany. At that point, this girl understood that Hashem is actually giving her a lesson. And she started to understand that the fact that she went against her background, her family, her people, Yiddishkeit, Hashem Barach, everything that she was educated on, she started to understand what a tragic mistake it was. And she, she, she didn't know what to do, but she, she actually became a bala tshuva. She took the tehillim and she started to cry and pray to Hashem, save my son. Together with this, the shliach was again very, very helpful. He found a, a person which was ready to sponsor a very good lawyer through the court we took which took quite a lot of time and was a huge expense and he gave all the money <clears throat> and uh, and and finally after a, ba a big struggle and by a miracle the judge decided that the child has to stay with his mother and he, they can go back to to the land of israel when she came back to Israel in that stage, she was already very warm about Yiddishkeit and, uh, and slowly, slowly, without going into all the details, she became a Baal Tshuva. And she married to a, also a Baal Tshuva. And, uh, and when they came to Danko, she said, the first time that I met Chabad House in the world was here in Darmkot in 2001. And now after a very big journey, which took so many years, 
<clears throat> I'm back here and I came here to say thanks. Thanks to Hashem, thanks to the Rebbe, and thanks to Chabad for being there for me, saving my child, saving my life. So of course, that was an, an amazing story. We're still in touch with her till today. And, uh, and this story is very similar to what we spoke before, that you might be in a situation in which you feel safe and you have everything. But still, the snake, the Yetzirah, has something to tell you. He's telling you, you can make it better, you can make it different. It's not necessarily the right thing what you are, you are being told here. And then he's, he's able to take the person to such a far place against his very values, very deep values, going to a simulation, which is something that I think that during the years of being in the in the um, place where she learned before the army, she didn't have a, even a thought about how can it be? But slowly, slowly, the Yetzirah is convincing the person that yes, this is also okay. And when he reminds that he made a mistake, it's already too late. But this is going from divine awareness to what we call self-awareness. So what is self-awareness? Self-awareness is the, the feeling that I want to be something special. I want to be different. I want to be unique. And I'm not ready to be dependent, not on parents, not on Hashem, not on some Rebbe, not on anything. I'm going to be really free now. And I will find myself and I will express myself and I will satisfy myself. That's it. Now in the world, self-awareness, it's just like a very good uh, um, target in life to have self-awareness. It is a good, um, it is a good thing. We're not saying it's not a good thing, but when it comes with the separation from, from your source, from your root, from your essence, so it becomes a very dangerous thing because you are uprooting yourself from the place that you are growing and you do not know what is the source of your life anymore. And in this place, you are in a, in a huge uh, danger because you don't have any protection and you do not want any protection because if you say, I need protection, it's, it will be like admitting that you made a mistake. So you are completely alone and, and the people who really care about you, love you and, and worry about you, they're not by, by us, they're not by you anymore because you took, you made a distance between yourself and to them. So your, your, your situation is very fragile. And actually you, you, you lose your identity. You, you would like to build a new identity, but in between losing your old identity and finding your new identity, you do not have any identity. That, ex that is exactly the situation in which so many people of the young generation of the Jewish people are found especially the people who are uh, within Israel. They, they have so much criticism about what is going on in Israel. They have a lot of pain. They are very frustrated. They, <clears throat> they, they, they are sure that there is something to do about it and it's not connected to anything which is known to them till today. And then 
they go out of Israel or maybe within Israel, but they go to a journey. We meet them in India, in a place which is full with idol worship and assimilation. And they say to themselves, if, the, if I do not have any identity and I want to build myself from zero, so why shouldn't I start in this monastery, which is giving a wonderful course in, in meditation? Why shouldn't I start with being afraid of this, uh, be, being a friend of, of this non-Jewish person? Maybe I can learn from him so much. Maybe he will protect me. <clears throat> and in this situation, which is a window of opportunities, if you are not connected to your root, so this window of opportunities become a very big, dangerous spot in life for you. So therefore it's very important to be within the, the frame of this window. To remind the person about his root, about his uh, about his his background, and about his essence, <clears throat> and hoping that within the the confusion, <clears throat> he will be able to overcome the need <clears throat> to separate himself in order to find himself. You can find yourself together with being connected to your source, to your family, to your people. Kind of kind. I'll tell another story. So when we started the Chabad house, we did not have a proper mikveh for women or for men. So as, as, as we are living in the, in the middle of the forest on the mountain, in the foothills of the Himalayas. <clears throat> so where we, and we were taking the, the women that were in a need to go to the mikveh, to a trek in the mountains, to a place in which there is a, a pool, which is proper halachically for making the tevila, the mikveh. One day came a woman to the Chabad house and she's talking with my wife. And she's asking her, do you have a mikveh here? So my wife looked at her, she wasn't looking religious at all. And um, she's telling her, listen, this is, there's no, uh, there's no uh, mikveh here. So the girl said, okay, never mind." But then my wife told her, just a minute, actually there is a mikveh here, but it's a trek in the mountains. It's, it's about, an hour and a half each direction uh, in the in the forest. And if you are ready, I'll go with you. So she thought about it. She asked her, her husband and uh, they said, okay, we're going. So we told them no problem, be ready for a small trek and uh, I had to go with them also. The, the husband had to go with them also. It's, it's not a place for a woman to be by themselves. And we started to go. Now this is a, this, that's it, it's a tough way. There's no proper road or anything. It's, there's no proper trail even. You go on rocks, you go down from rocks, you're, you're, you're falling down. Finally, after an hour, an hour and a half, you, go, you get to the right spot and the water is a freezing water coming from a spring in the mountains just beneath the glacier. And, then, and for an, older, an ordinary person to go into such water 
in the night, it's a, it's a very big challenge. So I went back with, just stand stood away from, from the place with her, the husband and my wife was there with her, but it wasn't easy for her to do what she, is, she had to do. But in the end of the day, Baruch Hashem, she was able to do it. She became pure. And then we started the trek back. It was already darkness on the way back. So with torches, we had to find a way. And uh, my wife asked her, this, this girl, tell me what's, can you explain me? I, I, I see that you're not really, you know, religious. I don't know if you keep anything. What happened that you were ready for such a sirot nefesh, a devotion to go to the mikveh? So this girl said that uh, my grandmother came from Libya. And um, she told me when I was a, a child, a small child, she told me that the situation in Libya was very dangerous because the Arabs were closing all the, all the mikvaot and the women were not able to pure themselves. So some of the, some of the women were able to dig a mikveh within their own house and to dip over there. Some of them were supposed to go for, from one house to another in the darkness and uh, find a mikveh. And it was very dangerous because the Arabs were, were there to, to hurt them. And my, my grandmother said that, I just want to let you know that, that we had to, uh, to really um, make a, a huge effort in order to keep the taharat mishpacha, the purity of the family. And, uh, and I wish you that when you will be married, you'll take it upon yourself. Of course, this girl we didn't really know what it is what it is all about, and uh, and uh, when she got married, she understood that this is the way to keep the and uh, she started to keep it. But now, when she was in such a situation without a mikveh or without a proper mikveh, she remembered that this was the message that she got from her grandmother. And she said, this is my way to be connected to her. So this is, this is an example of someone which went to a journey, but still remain connected to, it, to its roots. And of course, when, when we do such a journey, together with the connection, this connection allows us to take the good things from the past, from the parents, from the previous generations, and put it within our lives. Maybe we will be much better than our parents, but the good things from the past will be with us. So, the snake or the Yetzirah is offering us to completely ignore the place that we came from, what we call a divine awareness. But the real way to do it is not to ignore it, but to combine it together with the journey that I'm doing towards my self-awareness. Now, this combination between the two is the combination between the two sedras that we have this week. That there is the sedra of Ayakhel, which as we said, is, it's, a, it's a word which is connected to the divine awareness. And there's the, the, the sedra which is called Pikudeng, which is connected to the self-awareness. 
And when we have the two parashot connected to each other, Vayakher Pikudei, so we have a combination between the divine awareness and the self-awareness. How it is called, this third consciousness has a name. And it is called in Hasidut, a Yiddish natur, the Jewish nature or natural awareness. So what is the Jewish nature? The Jewish nature is the highest of all the three. It is the ability to be within the world and above the world, to be unique and to be part of the community, to be connected to the past and to be able to move ahead towards a better approach and a higher level of consciousness and spirituality in the future. Now, this combination between the two, which we call the Yiddish and Atu, the, the Jewish nature, that's the words of the Rabbi Hillel Mipavich, one of the greatest Hasidim of Chabad, that this Jewish nature is actually the, the way that Jews were behaving through the generations, growing from one step to another, connecting, inspired by the past, and having their Jewish spark, Jewish Mashiach spark, looking for how to make the world better. And within, with, with these two awarenesses and the combination between them, and the ability to know that both of them are truth. As we said, the, the snake has a point. If it did not have a point, he was not able to cheat both Adam and Chava. Adam was a very clever, wise, high spiritual consciousness person. So the fact that the snake was able to tell him something is missing, he was touching a sensitive point. There is something which is missing. Within the, within the divine awareness. The thing which is missing is your special spark that you are supposed to bring to the world. And unless you'll go to a journey by yourself, you will not be able to find this spark. So you have to somehow be able to go ahead and to be connected to your source. So we, we should take this advice, advice from the Yetzirah and know that this is that there is something truth about it, but we have to be very careful not to drown into the Olamot Klipot, the worlds of shells. It says in the Arizal that Adam Arishon was looking just for a minute, Leichalot Klipot, into the into the darkness of the, of the shells. And this short look that he made created a world which is existing almost 6,000 years now in which he have to purif purify himself from what he saw in the Hechalot Klipot, in the worlds of shells. So from the, from the minute they, they ate from the tree of knowledge when, when it was Friday and Motzai Shabbos, the first Motzai Shabbos, they were thrown out of, out of heaven. And from that point and on, they are trying to separate be, the, between the good and the bad. It took 2000 years until Abraham Avinu was born and, and uh, was, was a start of something pure. And then Ishmael took the klipa of the chesed and Esav took the klipa of, of Gvura. And then we had the pure first Ayid Shenatu, which is Yaakov Avin. And it says about Yaakov Avin in the Zohar that the beauty, the face of Yaakov Avinu was the same as the beauty of Adam Arishon. Shufraya de Yaakov, Keshufraya de Adam Kadma. 
So he was the one who understood the mistake, who was able to know that it is not about running away from your parents' house and doing whatever you like, like a sub. And it is not about being exactly like your, your grandmother, your grandfather and father, Abraham and Yitzchak. It is about having a special new combination between the two and creating the Yiddish Natur, the Jewish people who are able to combine the world and what is above the world, the nature and what is above the, what is above the nature. And this is the combination between the two parashot by Yakhel Pikudei. Each one of us is supposed to look in his life and maybe to make a, a list of things that these are the things that I would like to inherit from my parents. Even if they were chas v'shalom, not the right parents. There was something bad about them. There was something wrong, like wrong about them. Okay. But there were so many things good there. The fact that they choose me to come to this world and they invested so much in, in gr growing me up, educating me. Again, maybe I have a lot of criticizing on them. But in the end of the day, I have to search and find what was the good thing that they gave me. What did I inherit from them? And this is my root. This is what I got from Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. This is what I'm taking with me. Then I can make another list of things that I'm for sure I don't want, I don't want to take. That's not for me. This is a this is a clipper. And it wasn't right. And it wasn't correct. I do not want to have any connection with this anymore. Okay? That's also a good list. It's important. Go away from the bad and connect to the good. And then comes the third list. The third list is what do I have to bring to this world which no one else has? And how do I combine it with the good inspiration that I got from my past, my parents, my neighborhood? And, and it's very important because Sambale Chuva thinks that I, I grew up in such a dark, ignorant world. I don't want to take anything from that. I don't have any more connection to this. I'll grow myself from zero. I'll be a Baal Tshuva, pure and holy. And, uh, and I don't need any connection with my parents. But the person which is behaving like that, he is going to repeat on all the mistakes that his parents did. Because he's unable to verify what is good and what is bad. So he's taking all the package. He thinks that he's not taking anything of the package. But actually, he's taking the full package. Because if you're not able to look at your, at your package and to say, this is right, this is wrong, that I take, that I don't take, this I like, this I hate. And you say, I hate all of it. So you are unable to separate the bad within your own heart. And your identity is going to be a copy of your parents, if you would like it or not. That's going to be the result. And your children are going to experience something very similar to what you have experienced in your childhood. So it's very important to, to be able to uh, digest it, this idea and to, um, to have the ability of the Torah to distinguish between good and bad, and to know that my life has to be a combination of Vayakhel and Pikudei, divine awareness, self-awareness, and Bezrat Hashem, Yiddish Natur, the Jewish nature, in which Bezrat Hashem, each one of us, is able to reveal his mission in life 
and and to do his uh, his, his job properly and Bezat Hashem to uh, to have chazak chazak venit chazek. That's the end of uh, of every one of the chumashim. And why we are saying chazak chazak venit chazek? So now we just explained it. The chazak arishon is coming on the divine awareness that it has to be very strong, very clear. I have to have a divine awareness within. The chazak asheni is according is coming on the on the uh, self awareness, which as we explained, it's also very important. Just as it's written in Hasidut that every person has to know both his weak points and both his talents and good points in the same way. You see, he, he, the cheshbon nefesh, the, the accounting that the person has to do within, within, within his heart has to combine the two. So this is the chazak asheni, this is the self-awareness, chazak, chazak. And what is the third venit chazek? So venit chazek is the combination between the both. That it is stronger than both of them. Nit chazek. So this is the, also the reason that Vayakhel Pekodei is just the end of the, this chumash, that the, 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 the work that we have to do, the tip that we are taking from this parasha is to be in a situation of nit chazek. Bezat Hashem, we should all be successful in this, especially when this is all also going to be Shabbos Mevachim, Chodesh Nisan, which is the month of love, that Hashem showed His love to the children of Israel and redeemed them. So we should, we should return love to Hashem to combine between all our experiences, from the past, from the present. So Bezat Hashem, wishing all of you uh, a, a sweet and good week, Bezat Hashem.